This video presentation covers cross-tabulation tables. A cross-tabulation table is a way to see the relationship between two nominal or ordinal variables. Um, so cross-tabs are typically reserved for nominal and ordinal variables. So for instance, over here to our right in our first data set example, we have two variables, gender and afraid to walk alone. So notice that they're both nominal variables. We're going to create a cross-tabulation table. So the first step is to list our independent variable values. So looking at gender and afraid to walk alone at night, um, I'm thinking that gender is the independent variable. Um, and just, just using logic, gender should influence whether you're afraid to walk at night and not the other way around. Whether you're afraid to walk at night doesn't influence your gender. So gender is my independent variable and my independent variable is going to go in columns and columns are the ones that go from top to bottom so let me create two columns one for male and one for female okay I also need to create a total column which we'll talk about later so there are the columns for my independent variable now I need to create rows for my dependent variable so the dependent variable is afraid to walk at night and the values available to me are yes and no. And I also need to create a total row. The next step is to tally up the number of observations for each cell. In other words, how many males said yes, how many males said no, how many females said yes, and how many females said no. So now I've completed my tallies. It looks like only one male said they were afraid to walk at night, while four females said they were afraid to walk at night. Um, a total of five people said they were afraid to walk at night, and a total of six people said they were not afraid to walk at night. We had six females and five males. The next step I want to take is to calculate column percentages. So I recreated the table over here um, in our Word document. So again, we calculate percentages within the columns. What this means is that we're going to calculate the percentage of males who said yes and the percentage of males who said no. So for the males who said yes, there was one of them. And there was a total of five males. So we divide one by five, then multiply by 100 to get our percentage. Let's try another one. Let's try the number of males who said uh, the percentage of males who said no. So there was a total of four males who said no, and there was a total of five males in our survey. And so that's 80% of the males said no. Uh, we do the same thing with the females. So with females, there were four who said yes out of a total of six. So the percentage of females who said yes is 66.7%. Percentage of females who said no would come out to 33.3%. These totals down here will always equal 100. Um, and we continue to find the column percentages even for that last row. So a total of five people said yes and there was a total of 11 people in the survey which gives us 45.5 percent one more time six people said no out of a total of 11 and so that means about 54.5 percent of our sample said no all right, so now what does this tell us? Well, this tells us that 20% of the males in the sample said yes, and that 66.7% of the females in the sample said yes. Let's take a look at this cross-tab to understand strength. This cross-tab examines the role of education on church attendance. Strength is the difference in percentage between two cells. We can use strength to make comparisons. Comparing between two column categories, we can look at less than high school and university degree. We can see that 50% of the less than high school sample went to church two to three times per month or more. On the other hand, the more educated university degree sample had a proportion of 14.3% of 
the sample going to church two to three times per month or more. So we can conclude that within the sample, those with less education went to church more often than those with higher education. One word of caution is that it's never okay to compare between rows. So I would never compare the never row with the infrequently row. That's because we did not calculate row percentages. So in your textbook, it does talk about calculating row and column percentages, but for our purposes, we're only going to calculate column percentages. Your textbook also talks about the fact that you can place your independent variable in the columns or in the rows. Um, but again, for our purposes, we're only going to place our independent variable in the columns. We also need to consider whether our table has any directionality. Remember that directionality only applies to um, interval ratio variables or ordinal variables. Um, are we ever going to come across interval ratio variables on a cross tab? More than likely no, because interval ratio variables tend to have a large number of values. And since we're, work we're looking at a table here, that's going to be way too much information to include on a, on a table like this. Um, but some interval ratio variables have a small range of values and it would be acceptable to create a cross tab using an interval ratio variable with this small range of values such as a um, number of kids, number of children, um, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe more than 5. Um, so those categories would be okay to put on a cross tab. But, um, Deciphering directionality is usually gonna, going to occur between two ordinal variables, just like we have here. Um, and directionality can either be positive or negative. Positive means that both variables move up and down together, so as one variable goes up, the other one goes down. So an example of this is your education level in your social class. Um, it's predicted that your education level is going to open up more professional opportunities for you and more access to social mobility and therefore your social class is also going to go up as your education level goes up. A negative relationship between two ordinal variables occurs when both variables move in opposite directions. So as one variable goes up, the other variable is going down. Right here in front of us, we have educational degree negatively related with church attendance. Those with higher educational degrees attend church less often than those with lower educational degrees. And so this would be an example of a negative relationship.